Hey everyone, I'm Justin, and today I'm joined by my good friend Leah, um, and we're going to be reviewing the Sarah Jane adventure story, The Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith. Uh, Leah, how are you? Do, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, thanks for having me, Justin. Um, your channel's awesome, and I'm honored to be a part. Um, yeah, sure. My name, as you heard, Leah Washington. Uh, me and Justin are actually classmates at Berkeley College of Music together. Uh, I recently just graduated, but we were brought together by our mutual love for Doctor Who, comic book characters, and their respective shows and movies. So we're just talking about stuff that we love. Good to be here, Justin. Thank, thanks for coming on. So the wedding of Jared, Sarah Jane Smith. So the wedding of Jared, Sarah Jane Smith. Elizabeth Slade and Sarah Jane. Um, and this episode was a very special episode because it featured David Tennant as the 10th Doctor. So, uh, Leah, what, what were your thoughts on it? Well, um, as you can see, I love the 10th Doctor. Yeah. So, this was definitely a treat. Um, Sarah Jane is definitely like one tough cookie in this episode alone just proves that so i really thought she did such a great job in this episode and i really enjoyed watching it it was a lot of fun yeah um yeah definitely i had some issues with it but overall i enjoyed it so um we can start with uh we can start with part one where the the kids are so that's uh luke clyde and ronnie are suspicious of Sarah Jane. She keeps leaving with kind of flimsy explanations. And they follow her and see that she is um, in fact going on a date with a guy. Um, and they kind of have like the exact like reaction you would expect from, from kids. They're like, ew, gross. <laughs> Oh, people are reading. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Nobody over 22 should be doing that in public. Actually, at all. Shut up, Clyde. Oh, that's brilliant. She's got herself a man. They definitely lived up to... Uh, the target demographic. But yeah. Um, yeah, I thought they, first of all, I'll just say like as a general note, I thought the cast that they picked for this show yeah. uh, was very, they were very good together. Yeah. They had chemistry together. And even when Sarah Jane was sort of off screen or really just like on her date, the kids kept the pacing well. They kept it interested and exciting. So um, so I really like seeing them, you know, on this episode. I thought their chemistry was really good together. But yes, the, the typical, oh my gosh, who, who is he? Like, gross, I didn't know you did that at your age. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, except, I think except Ronnie. Ron, Ronnie's like, oh my God, he, she found someone. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is like my reaction, because I was like, come on, Sarah Jane, all the stuff that she does, you know. Yeah. She deserves some semblance of normalcy. So. Yeah. So they do some investigating, the the kids do, into this guy. And, you know, with, with any kind of um, either comic book story or sci-fi story like this, whenever, like, action type stuff, whenever someone finds like the perfect match for them you like you know something's off it's, it's such a i actually don't like that in stories like it's kind of like a um like like there's a spider-man comic story where he gets married and then in like the next one they like totally reverse it oh wow um, yeah um so actually um it's not it's not so much a criticism of the episode but of the genre um, that like you can't just have like a happy marriage, but anyway, that, that's kind of a tangent. No, um, I'm kind of glad that you brought that up. If yeah. I just mentioned like one thing about that, yeah, and I kind of 
I felt that going into it because I was like, okay, I love Sarah Jane. I think she does a really good job in her show. And I was like, okay, so going into this, oh no, she's meeting someone. <laughs> like, he's going to turn out to be an alien or yeah. affected by an alien. Like, either way, I just knew going in, I was like, this cannot end well. Mm-hmm. And I just, I don't know. I, it kind of plays on the theme that they set up for the episode. Like, and I guess we'll talk more about this. I know we, we're yeah. jumping head but when the villain comes in um it's amazing because he's tempting sarah jane with something that she subconsciously actually <laughs> that she subconsciously <laughs> wait i'll stop but then we'll keep it on <laughs> with something that she subconsciously actually <laughs> that she subconsciously <laughs> like you know marriage to settle down have a sort of normal life yeah. So that's very real, you know, and I think that makes it even harder for her in the end. So that's why. Yeah, um, yeah, and it also, I don't, I don't know, but oftentimes, I don't know if this episode really leaned into it, but oftentimes there's like a dichotomy of like, either you get to do the saving the world thing, or you get to have like a marriage. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and I think like, um, like I think it assumes that there's no scenario in which. Um, I, I know with this specific scenario, um, there's like that, um, later we find out about that, like, mind control ring, but if this were just some guy, she still totally could have done stuff like that, you know, they, like, just save the world and stuff. Yeah, and I think that was sort of the, sort of, heart-wrenching aspect of it, because, like, by the end, he was totally broken with the whole alien incursion yeah. uh, stuff, um, so, I mean, if he had a like he was sort of out of time and out of place but if he hadn't have been they could have totally had a relationship and I think that yeah. just makes it all the more sad at the end of it so. yeah mm-hmm. um, so the the kids um, investigate into like who this guy is and they go to his house which they find is like totally like there, there's nothing in it there's like uh, he's gotten like mail for like months that he hasn't opened um and they um they uh, and then they confront Sarah Jane about it and uh at this point um she has that engagement ring on that has like the mind control so she's just not having any of it I kind of like that part of the I kind of like that part of the episode um because it sets up a lot of mysteries so like we have an alien in a box and a package yeah. <laughs> and then we have Sarah Jane with a ring on and yeah. and then we, we don't really know who this Peter guy is like we kind of sense like he seems nice but we kind of sense there's something going on there and so by the end of the first episode you know we have all these these questions you know like oh what's going on I thought they kind of added to that mix good and then the doctor we hear the TARDIS and so like yeah. for anybody who's who knows Doctor Who? They're like, oh my gosh, the Doctor's about yeah. So. yeah, there's a lot of like teasing of it in this episode. Yeah. Like, there's the TARDIS, and then you get the like teasing the setup part too. And then after, so after they confront Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane gives them almost like not bribes them, but like does things for them um, that they won't want to, uh, which will make them, which she hopes will make them not want to confront her like she gives uh canine to Clyde yeah, yeah. and um she goes sh- dress shopping with uh with Ronnie and um I don't think she had to give Luke anything because uh, no. Luke's just her son and then after that you get the like the tricks are laughing like ha 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 and then she uh, like the big thing for me was when she unplugged Mr. Smith like she oh yeah sh- that was like, oh no! Yeah, so, <laughs> like, yeah. no. It's just That's how you know. like, uh, so the ring went off. Um, like you can see it. Like it's really obvious when it's when it's doing its thing. It's like glowing red. Yeah. And then Mr. Smith says, "Anomaly detected." And then Sarah Jane immediately says, "Initiate uh, like <laughs> shutdown sequence or something." Don't you think it's a bit fast? Oh, you're telling me. I've got so much to arrange. A lot of changes. Sarah Jane, anomaly detected. That reminds me, first big change. Mr. Smith, commence deactivation program. But Sarah Jane, I have detected an impulse registry. Initiate t- 
total deactivation, Mr. Smith. Protocol. Bye. Comply. Goodbye, Sarah No, Sarah Jane. He was trying to tell us something. Oh, the world can look after itself. I'm busy with something normal for a change, and I don't want anything, any of this, getting in the way. That was crazy. Like, you knew things were bad yeah. at that point. Yeah. So. But then again, like, I really, like, as I'll say again, um, I know I already touched on this, but I just yeah. think it was cool how they added that theme. Like, everything she was saying, Yeah. even though the ring was sort of making her say that, there might have been some truth to what she was saying because these are stuff that this is stuff that she might have daydreamed about. I know she loves her cure in life, you know, with the, saving the world with the kids and all that kind of thing. But part of her actually wants to, you know, get wrapped up and getting married and you know, yeah. all life. So I like that sort of yeah. thing. Um, and so, then the wedding. We go to the wedding, right? Yeah. Uh, so so there, <laughs> there 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 was that side plot with the. Um, that like slug alien thing. Oh yeah, what yeah. I yeah, that one kind of went over my head. Um, you're right, and I just realized I never got back to that. But I guess she had seen that in a previous episode or something. I thought yeah. that was kind of cool they brought that in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the CGI looked pretty bad, but it was only <laughs> on the screen for like a few seconds. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like normal Tuesday. We're just sending a slug. Yeah. We're just ordering a slug online, like an alien slug, and then just like transmatting it to like its home planet just like every was Tuesday at this perfect time where Peter yeah. comes to meet them and then like yeah, exactly. my favorite line I'm glad you brought that up my favorite line of this episode was hold on I wrote it down it was by K9 um what did he oh don't look at me everything is normal <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't look at me <laughs> alert mistress so which nothing is ever normal in the Doctor Who universe. Yeah. Um so then they go to the wedding. Um which the is wedding. Now, um which I think is about um, only a month after they met. Cause I okay, remember, yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah, um, I remember they said at the beginning, oh, this is her, like, fifth bad excuse in, like, a month or something. Um, so, like, everyone's talking about, like, how unusual it is because they just met. Um, and... Um, and then they have, like, uh, Ronnie's was, mom, like, tries to hit on him, which I thought was really odd. That was a bit odd, yeah. That was a bit odd, yeah. It was hasty. The whole thing was so hasty. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then, uh, so then they're at the wedding ceremony, and, um... Uh, then everything starts to happen. Yeah, and then... <laughs> So, if anyone has, like, any objections, speak now or forever hold your peace. And then, Leah, what, what happens next? The doctor. <laughs> Which, okay, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, too, because, like, I don't know, maybe just because, like, I'm the biggest Doctor Who fan, and I know yeah. you can relate to that. Like, we love Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, so, of course, I want the Doctor to have as much screen time as possible, and I yeah. was hoping they would bring him in a lot earlier than that. Um, that's sort of, like, something I had a qualm I had with the yeah. episode. But his interest was really good, too the way that it came, so yeah. I'm kind of satisfied with it, but yeah. If any person can show just cause or impediment why they may not be joined together, let them speak now forever hold their peace. Stop this wedding now! Master! I said stop this wedding. Sir! Drink the letter! Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought about that too because, like, narratively, it makes the most sense for him to come in when he did because, uh, because he's like, like the 
like you see the TARDIS trying to get through and through, and then he finally gets through at like the very last second. Um, and I thought that like created like a lot of tension, um, yeah. which was nice, and, and a really good cliffhanger too. That's true. Um, but then at the same time, it's like David Tennant's like one chance to uh, appear in the show and interact with these characters. So I don't know, maybe maybe the maybe you, maybe they could have cut out the thing with the slug and then instead had the doctor uh, yeah. do, doing stuff on his own. Um, like trying to track the trickster or something. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I also liked uh, the TARDIS noises. They were so cool. But yeah, I also liked, I think the TARDIS noises were really cool. Like they used yeah. the same TARDIS noise. All the scenes with the TARDIS I thought were really cool. Yeah. They did them well. Um, but also before we go into the next episode, did you catch some of the references they had to like previous Sarah Jane and Doctor Adventures? Like when she said, where would I send the invite to to the doctor about the wedding? She said, Metabilius 3, which was from like the Planet of the Spiders episode. Well, your ancestors were colonists. Colonists, explorers. 433 Earth years ago, their starship came out of its time jump with no power left and crashed on Metabilius 3. Over 400 years ago. You know the story very well, don't you? Saba, my father taught it me, just as his father taught him and his father before. An oral tradition so detailed. Oh, it's fascinating. The eight legs? Why, they came from Earth too. But there aren't any spiders as big as these on Keep Earth. Keep your voice down, my child. That word's forbidden here. But you're quite right. Like the I did not though. catch that one. I yeah, caught some of the so other cool. ones in part two. Like, they're in part two. The trickster says to the doctor, "Oh, you once uh, you once held the key to time in your hands. Now you're surrounded by children." Talk to me more about that. Where is that reference from? Because I, I couldn't place what episode that was from. Um, well, it's actually from so the season that we watched that has um, um, remember that episode we watched with the White Guardian. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah so it's that entire season, and so each episode. Yeah. This is why that's my favorite season of Classic Who because it has a it has a series arc. I see. Um, yeah. Each episode, they're trying to um, get one of the key, key pieces of the key to time, and then yeah. in the finale of that season, they 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 actually finish it and they get the whole key. To, and I won't spoil what happens, but they at that point they've completed the key to time. We have the power to do anything we like. Absolute power over every particle in the universe. Everything that has ever existed or ever will exist. As from this moment. Are you listening to me, Romana? Yes, of course because I'm listening. if you're not listening, I can make you listen. Because I can do anything. As from this moment, there's no such thing as free will in the entire universe. There's only my will because I possess the key to time. Doctor... Are you all right? Well, of course I'm all right, but suppose I wasn't all right. <sighs> now, this thing makes me feel in such a way I'd be very worried if I felt like that if I was somebody else feeling like this about that. Do you understand? Yes. What do you understand? That the sooner we hand this over to the White Guardian, the, the better. better. That's so cool to me, because I just love it when the writers and the producers take the time to add in, you know, yeah. throwbacks and little Easter eggs like that. I think it really connects the whole universe together, especially since this is like a spinoff. So I thought they did a really good job with that in this yeah. episode. So no complaints on that end. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I guess we can uh, we can start talking about part two. Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, part two is just like a completely different tone, almost. Like. Yeah. Part one just starts off kind of, you know, it's kind of like hearty, it's kind of goofy. Ooh, Sarah James in love. And yeah. then progressively gets like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, you know? And so now we're like, okay, this is bad. What are we going to yeah. do? It's serious, so. Um, so, uh, the beginning of part two is actually where most of my issues are with the episode. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, please share them. Yeah. Um, so each, I'll probably add in a little like meme skit thing about this later, <laughs> but like in editing. I look forward to that. Um, uh, so there, the, tr- the trickster traps um, Sarah Jane and uh, what's his name? Dalton something? Dalton's his last name. 
um, Peter, I think Peter Dalton. Yeah, yeah Peter. Peter, so he yeah. traps Sarah Jane and Peter in the in one second, mm-hmm. um, just in the space of one. So 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 they're on like a time loop where yeah, like the whole time is that one second, and then they trap, um, and then he traps the Doctor and uh, Luke, Clyde, and Ronnie in a different second. Um, which is, which is like, I, I like that premise, but yeah, yeah. It's kind of um, tricky. Yeah. they spend so much time trying to explain, yeah. uh, explain how this works and what it, so, so I think it's cause it's a kid show, but yeah. it didn't land well with me as an adult because the first time they explained it, I kind of got it. Um, but I guess with kids that like, it's not so easy for them to understand. Like if, if this... If this was as a Doctor Who episode, um, they would have just said it once and then moved on. Yeah. Last time query, where is Mistress Sarah Jane? No, no, I... Did you miss me? Did you wish me, eh? Repeat, whereabouts of Sarah Jane? Where is she? Where are we? Hey, editing voiceover Justin here. So, K9 and Clyde just correctly asked, like, where's Sarah Jane? What's going on? Where are they? But instead of just explaining where they are and moving on, they explain it over and over again. So I tried to count all the times that they explained it. Uh, so here's that. In a dimensional shift, time's moved on. But us, this entire building, we've been left behind. Okay, got no ties. Materializing until time moves forward. Look at the clocks. Time hasn't stopped. Time hasn't stopped. This second's on a loop. 23 seconds and 23 minutes past 3 o'clock. We're caught inside it in this one second. So we've been kept behind in this second. Affirmative, Mistress Rani. I'm legitimately curious, like, do kids actually need that many explanations to understand that kind of concept that they're that they're trapped in a second? If you're a young kid watching this or you have kids and you can ask them, please, please let me know in the comments. Is this like an appropriate amount of explanation that kids would need to understand that concept? Or do kids not need that much explanation? My guess is they wouldn't. So I want to be able to criticize it for that, but I don't know, so I can't really. Anyway, back to the video. Yeah, so it was that, and then they also took a long time. I See, this one I think kids could have easily gotten, which is that, um, which is that they're trapped in different seconds from mm-hmm. Sarah Jane and Peter because obviously they can do something about it if they're there, but if it's just the two of them, then she's more likely to say, yes, I'll get married to you. Wow. Wow. And uh, I'm actually glad you brought that up, too, because, yeah, that was something that I also kind of had trouble with. I mean, the fact that they kept repeating the concept over and over again about the split temporal uh, schism. Personally, I I think they could have just said it all in one sentence. (laughs) Like, if anything, just said it very simply at first and then moved on. Um, but I guess the show knows their audience. I don't know. I, I feel like kids are real sharp these days, so they don't. Yeah, they probably true. don't need things explained, you know, nearly as much. But, and I, I kind of felt that made the first part of the episode drag a little bit. Yeah. And definitely. also, there wasn't much movement. Um, there was just like movement from one room to another. You yeah. know, you can kind of like play with that concept a whole lot more than I think they really needed to. Um, but they kept the dialogue fresh, and I think that's something that Doctor Who's really good at, which is. Not really changing the set as much sometimes, but uh-huh. still keep the story moving along. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I sort of had pros and cons with that whole, uh, yeah. really, the first 10 to 15 minutes of the episode was then basically moving. Yeah. Along. But um, I think I think after, after they stop explaining everything... Um, so, okay, just one more thing about that. Yeah. They have, like, frantic music, and they're, like, acting like it's supposed to be high energy. Um, and like, well, fast pace. What's gonna happen next? But all they're doing is explaining that. Exactly. Thought, yeah. Um, yeah. And the music was very good, by the way. Yeah. yeah. We have to say a note about that for our oh, back. <laughs> but especially, yeah, especially the music right at the end. Uh, mm-hmm. It was like a 
piano thing. Yeah. Like, will I see you again? I yeah. hope not. Yeah. yeah. So it was so like you just felt it. It was just so yeah. heart wrenching. But um, I don't. Speaking of music, I, I we didn't talk about this for part one. But when K Nine uh was running it was when the alien popped out of the box yeah and K9 is like okay alien detected or whatever and he's going to see uh where it's coming from like uh, you know the first in part yeah. one they play a little bit of the middle eight from Doctor Who like the they play, was, yeah it was they, they played a little bit of it like a sort of arrangement of it but you could definitely is that, is that like part of the soundtrack or something um I don't know it was in the score oh. and uh so yeah so uh the composer played a little the middle eight in the score there right. i guess sort of like a throwback to k9 and the yeah. doctor but i thought that was kind of clever you know since the doctor was going to be in this episode so i just kind of yeah. wanted to bring it up but going forward with part two yeah um in the temporal space of, yeah yeah so i think i think the second half of part two is really strong so yeah. um so there's a scene where the doctor kind of like confronts the trickster which is really good um, he's scary. The trickster is yeah, scary. scary. And really looks, scary to look at. Like even by like, like the CG, like the CGI looks good for the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's he's kind of like. Uh, well, I can put a picture on screen, but he's like, uh, he's like, okay. he's like uh, nightmares. Like, doesn't have a face. He just has like outlines. It, it almost he almost looks like Cassandra. Oh, that's yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. And the teeth, just yeah. his, his whole image. That's like <laughs> a kid show. <laughs> like yeah. this would be a scary villain for main universe Doctor Who. Yeah. Like for any adult watching, he was yeah. he was so. I thought they did the villain well. Yeah, and all like the the this was kind of complex. Like parts of it were kind of complex for like they had all that like angel imagery. Yeah, like, all, like religious allegory. Yeah, that was interesting. That was very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was really yeah, interesting. Yeah, like, like he was a, uh, like, Peter called him the angel because, mm. um, because he brought him back to life, basically. And, um, but then also, he resembled the devil a lot because yeah. of, like, his appearance mm-hmm. and, um, He's like trying to cause chaos and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing because it's like a double edged sword because, like, yeah. people was caught on the side of it where, you know, he thinks there's nothing but good. Like, wow, it saved my life. It brought me yeah. love. How can that be bad? Yeah. And that was really difficult. And then Sarah, you know, she knows a trickster for who the trickster actually is. And so, yeah. you know, she can't be up to anything but trouble. And I thought that was interesting too because at first she was trying to figure out, okay, Wow, he really did bring him back to life and wants us married. Yeah. So, what are you up to? So, and so he was kind of living up to his name, the trickster. And also, when you were talking about the religious allegory about yeah. the theme of temptation. So, like, she, yeah. he was actually tempting Sarah Jane with something that she wanted. Mm-hmm. So, that just made it so much harder. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, but I thought, I thought Elizabeth Slayton played that part so good too. Again, referencing back to part one. Sorry for everybody for the confusion. But um, the scene where she's telling Luke after the kids had found out that she's going out with someone, um, she was just talking about how much, you know, she loves her life now. Um, but sometimes she does, you know, dream about getting married. And, but she's always been, it just hasn't worked out just because of how crazy her life is, you know, oh, good reason. Um, so, yeah, that whole theme through the episode, I thought she just acted it so well. Um, yeah. So much conflict of her priorities. And so, yeah, she did a really good job. So I thought Clyde was actually the best person in this episode. Yes. Standout um, character, Clyde. Standout. Yeah. So he's in part one. He was kind of like leading the charge on who really is this guy and like being suspicious from the start. I was like, yeah. yes, Clyde. Me too. <laughs> yeah. And then Luke and Ronnie kind of mellow out and they kind of go along with it, but he's always. He, he like he never stopped being suspicious, and then True. in part two, he comes up with at least like temporary, de- temporarily defeating the trickster with the Artron energy that he gets from the TARDIS. Trickster! Clyde. 
died, Lama. Why do you call me? I wish to serve you. I wish to join the Pantheon. I know something, a secret, something that can help you. You know nothing. You have the mind of a chittering insect. Be gone. Gotcha. No! Yep. Mm -hmm. That was a very standout moment for me with Clyde. Yeah. Uh, yes, the whole episode, you know, he was very inquisitive. He was very suspicious. Yeah. And I was like, same, Clyde, same, investigate. K-9 was also very helpful, too, as a side yeah. note. I kind of like their their little relationship there. Um, but, yeah, when Clyde gets the Artron energy from the TARDIS, I thought something really bad was going to happen to Clyde, so I'm glad that it didn't. Um, but, yeah, I thought that was a really clever plan of his. Yeah. And he did have a big deal in saving the day. So, But, yeah, that was really brave for the character. I feel yeah. like it was almost... I hadn't seen um, I hadn't seen all of Sarah Jane, so I don't know how much development he's had in the past. But I kind of get a sense that Clyde in this episode yeah. got some pretty strong development. So, yeah, yeah I think um, I think he, from what I re I don't remember very well, but I do think I remember that he was very like he was there since season one. Mm -hmm. Like um, Ronnie was only there since like season two or three. I was say she's fairly in it, right? Yeah, because because yeah. um, first it was Maria, and then they they replace her with, with oh, okay. Ronnie. Yeah, um, and she's also been in Doctor Who, right? The actress who plays Ronnie, she played uh, in Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror in the most recent season twelve as um, yeah. uh, the gosh, I can't remember her name, but the queen, the the main villain in that. Oh, episode. really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they brought yeah. her back. Final weapon for our collection. And what were you planning to do with this? Nothing, I just wanted you to take it. Tesla now! I was kind of glad it Yeah, um, yeah. Um, you, you know JXE, right? Um, yes, yeah. The, yeah. yeah, he, uh, he, um, he said that he wants um, a twist where Ronnie has just been the Ronnie this whole time. Uh, <laughs> that, well, you live up to her name. You live up to her name. Everyone's, a lot of people are saying, you know, they want the Ronnie back in some way, you know? Yeah. People were thinking the Ronnie would come back in season 12. Yeah. And, and especially when they announced that the, the actress who played Ronnie and Sarah Jane was coming back, was coming to Doctor Who. They yeah. thought, oh my goodness, what if she's playing? But, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, fan theories, fan theories. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know this is such a chance. Yeah. Like, I'm not, a, like, I'm not against the Ronnie coming back. Um, but, like, I didn't really like her. I didn't really love her as a villain in class. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'd, I'd much prefer, like, the middle of the come back. Oh, so, that would be yeah. so cool. And I know yeah. you, that's okay. <laughs> Your blooper reel should be that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we got it. That's good. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, oh. um, I know you did a video of some of the uh, yeah. characters that you, you know, you like to yeah. see. I guess. Check that out, everyone. But um, yeah, so uh, uh, this episode, I think she shined too. Yeah. Um, I, I just think all the kids, and I said this already, but. I think all the kids did a really good job in this episode. They really yeah. carried it, especially with yeah. the doctor. The chemistry with the doctor was really good. Yeah, and then um, Sarah Jane was really good, like her having to say no. Um, yeah. And her having to say no and like that ultimately defeating the trickster. Yeah. Um, so it's like, actually like, it's like, it's like she's actually doing stuff instead of just being like, uh, I know it's her show. Um, mm -hmm. But it was nice that even though she had like a love interest, it, like that wasn't like the thing that was defining her. Yes, that's so good. Actually, can we talk a little bit about that too? Because sure. you're right. I thought it was cool that even though the doctor was in this episode, and obviously, you know, this is a spinoff of Doctor Who yeah. main show, it was still Sarah Jane's show. Yeah, like the trickster. The they said at the be uh, at the beginning of part two. 
they were like, okay, Ronnie was like, okay, I got it. The trickster is keeping us hostage. Yeah. And the doctor was hostage with them. And so that sort of sets it up where Sarah Jane is still the main focus of the episode. He's still primarily after yeah. her. She's his biggest threat. And yeah. the doctor is in it and he's prominent in it, but it's still Sarah Jane. Yes. So she's the action hero and she ends up ultimately saving the day. Well, everyone helping, of course, but yeah. I just thought that was kind of cool how they kept it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't feel like a Doctor Who episode with Sarah Jane and the kids. It felt like a Sarah Jane episode that that just with the, with the Doctor. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah, another thing I didn't like um, the Doctor. I think was used too much for exposition. Mm. It's like he, I get it because he's smart and he just like knows what's going on, but he didn't really do much. Like I know that it really should be the characters who ultimately saved the day, but I think the Doctor could have had a bigger role in helping. Yes, like, he even, if, even if he had suggested, like, he could have suggested to Clyde to use the Archon energy or something. Yeah. Like, I he see. should have done anything else besides, like, explain what's happening to them. Wow. And I think, I think you actually touched on something that's, like, even deeper, because when you think about it, I mean, not that it was bad, but there wasn't a lot of your traditional action in this part of the episode like it That's was true. more so like emotional uh, tragedy and challenge yeah. And, yeah I mean there was of course you know some key action moments but yeah. like it, when you think about it as opposed to like compared to a Doctor Who episode or something or even yeah. a past Sarah Jane episode yeah there wasn't really a lot of that so maybe that's all the Doctor really had to do but yeah that's true that's true but that's yeah, a really I think, I think Death, death of the doctor. We're going to be reviewing that next. Okay, is cool. like, is like much. It's like much different than this. So that the doctor is a much bigger role. Oh wow. Um, he. Um, That's with the eleventh doctor, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and it is more like it's definitely more like action packed in that one, from what I remember. Which is very characteristic of eleven. <laughs> so. Yeah. But ten too. So yeah, it's it's different that they didn't really have him play a more active role and, and it was different I mean he moved around a lot but it was mostly for the sake yeah. of explaining the temporal schism yeah. split and all that so yeah you know so should we talk about the ending yeah yeah please do Let's... yeah it is it is a very nice it's like kind of bitter because like she doesn't get married yeah um but everything goes back to the way it was um, which is not like a super happy ending, but it's like, it's like not a sad ending either. Yeah. That's like it's a, like, oh, everything's just yeah. like how it was, which wasn't perfect, but you know, it was like, it's still, it's still good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The way that they left it all, I mean, it, it was, it was like we lost something, but also, well, it's kind of what she said to Luke at the, in the first part, she said, yeah matter what happens we're okay right you know what i mean and that's exactly what happened stuff Mm -hmm. happens but they're okay but the part that really got me and where i was like crying it was when um the the time fixed itself i mean they fixed time Mm -hmm. and everyone's back in the church and sarah jane is standing at the altar alone yeah, and her back is turned so away from the camera. Yeah, it was just so sad. And you turn around and you see her crying because in that moment you see, wow, she was so close yeah. to getting something that she really, you know, sort of dreamt of having. Yeah, and it was real in that moment. You know how all that just melted away, and I just thought that was really, really yeah. sad. You did a great job. I was a puzzle. So, so yeah. Do you do you feel like they were in trying to they were trying to imply that? Um, she liked the doctor, like romantically. I I did get sort of a hint of that, but the thing is, and I'm not saying this excuses it. Yeah. But I noticed a sort of theme like that with all more a lot of the doctors of companions. Yeah. I noticed that, and I guess you could. I guess it's about the way you perceive it. Um, so you could perceive it as yet. Yeah, yes, the doctor's like all these people's love interests. Yeah. But also, maybe it's just his presence 
is such a unique uh, anomaly in their lives that whatever yeah. they do sort of revolves around had them having met with the doctor and yeah. having been exposed to all this extraterrestrial space and time yeah. travel. So maybe it's the idea of the doctor that yeah. sort of like involved in her life and whatever she does, obviously it's always going to be impacted by her having yeah. me uh, in a friendship or whatever with the doctor. So maybe that's sort of, yeah, awesome. she, she said something that kind of made me think that, which was so, so she had just seen the doctor stop this wedding now. And then, um, and then she said, uh, so Peter asks her to marry him, and then she says something like, there's another man or something. Oh, yeah. And, and then, yeah. and then right, either right before or right after that, she's, like, talking about how the doctor said, like, um, that it would be bad if, if she did this yeah. or something. We're about to be married. This is our perfect day. Another man. Doctor. Sarah Jane, please listen to me. All you have to say is, I do. And then we'll be together. So confused. And just say you'll marry me. Say, I do. Of course, we're getting married. But always another man. Always. Doctor. Where's the doctor? Doctor! But, I don't, but, but that's kind of like the only thing you get, so I don't know if that's like enough to go on. No, but that's a that's a good point though. That you brought yeah. up, you notice sort of a thread, a few of the lines, yeah, or like yeah. that too. So, but like I said, I also noticed that. Not that it excuses it, but I noticed that in Doctor Who. I mean, a lot of the companions say things like that, and so yeah, that's something that I didn't notice. Yeah, I'm starting to see it as like, like I said, like just like a thread. Like maybe it's the idea of the Doctor. Anything they do. Is going to be affected by their association. With yeah. Them. So. Yeah. So uh, we can just talk about this overall, I guess. Overall. Yeah. Overall, I enjoyed it, and um, it does have its problems, but I think David Tennant brings really good energy that kind of makes up for that. Yeah. While like kind of not like overpowering the show. What I kind of liked about the episode, uh, I like I liked the pacing, e- even though it was a bit, sometimes it was a bit hasty in the first part and in the second yeah. part it was a bit repetitive. But I thought the dialogue was really good. Uh-huh. And I think this is a cool jumping on point. Like it's a cool episode to introduce people. You don't it really is, have, yeah. have a, liar, pro- a lot of prior information. Um, you might need to do a quick Google search on the trickster, but you really don't yeah. have to. And I think that's, I always think that's kind of cool when an episode can kind of, I mean, a two-part yeah. can live on its own. So I think that's something that works in its favor. Yeah, like like if someone likes the 10th Doctor and you want to get them yeah, to, to exactly. watch Sarah Jane, like this would be good. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. And then from here, especially with the ending, for people who haven't seen the classic series, they're like, oh, I wonder what relationship, you yeah. know, they have in the past and they might be encouraged to go and learn more. And uh, I just really like that setup. So. Yeah. And also, Um, just like as a a little tidbit, I really like the sort of dynamic between, and it's probably just not unique to this episode, but I like how they did it in this episode. The dynamic between Mr. Smith, the computer, and K-9, the the dog. They're both really sophisticated machines, and they just, they can't get along. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. (laughs) That was really cute. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I forget what they said, but it was really funny. Yeah, it was just, yeah. I don't know, that whole dynamic. It was like the machine was like, I mean, Mr. Smith said to Canine, like, no one asked you or something like that. Or, yeah. You know, it was just, their whole dynamic was kind of funny. Yeah. Query, am I to understand you were using my tracking system to spy on Sarah Jane? It's the fifth time she's done this in a month, Mr. Smith. We've got to find out what she's really doing. She goes off on her own or mysterious. What if she gets in trouble? This is highly irregular behavior. Do not exceed your function, Mr. Smith. Your opinion has not been asked for. That told you. <laughs> Good dog. Affirmative, Master Clyde. So, but overall, two thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> do you rank yeah. these great episodes? Like, do we do it on a scale of one to ten or something like that? Or? I don't normally rate them because okay. 
I haven't been able to figure out what is a good um, metric to rate them based on. That makes sense. Because yeah. I like things, I, I like things for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So, so it's very difficult for me to come up with one objective like metric. I completely understand yeah. that, especially with Doctor Who. It's really hard because, um, you know, we sort of talked about this before. Like some of us might have favorite doctors, but that doesn't mean that the doctors that are aren't our favorites that we don't still like. So, like, it's the same yeah. thing with the episodes. Like, we all just love the episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Even if some are not as good as the others, like, if yeah. it was the only thing on TV, of course we'd watch it because we love Doctor Who. So, yeah. so I understand what you're, where you're coming from. Yeah. All right. Well, um, th thanks so much for, for coming on. Thank you for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. It was so, a lot. Um, everyone, please let us know in the comments. Um, have you seen this episode recently? If so, what did you think of it? Let us know um, yeah. and subscribe to this person because Justin's got a lot of good content yeah. coming at you. Um, you have a SoundCloud? Um, yeah, I do have a SoundCloud. You can check me out. Yeah. Um, I can send Justin the link, but you can just add me on anything. I got Instagram, YouTube, Miss Musical. Oh, you do have YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so subscribe to her as well uh, on YouTube. Um, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Stay white.